I made a video quite a while back about a heater just like this one. I'm lucky here in that I've got two identical spaces so I can run comparative tests side by side. So I ran one pod where they had a heater just like this running in it, and I had another pod with no heater at all, no candles to compare them side by side, just to see how much of a difference a heater like this would make in a small space. Which it turns out was quite a controversial video because the number of comments I've had saying that it was a ridiculous, stupid video and what I should have done was tested one of these against six candles by itself to show the difference. The difficulty is that that wouldn't have really shown the uh, a really fair test. In order, the reason that this works better over plain candles is because a huge amount of the heat coming off this is radiant. I put my hand there, I can feel it. This has only just come on, so it's still quite cool. I can almost touch it. But the heat coming off it is radiant. The heat coming off candles going up heats the air that is convective. And a thermometer, like I ran with the other experiment, is a very effective way of measuring the air temperature but it's a very poor way of measuring radiant heat. So wouldn't really be a fair test of the two. You know, wouldn't really test the radiant heat. There is a device that's very good at measuring radiant heat and that's a wet bulb meter. And they run to between 250 to 300 pounds each. Uh, and I'd need two of them, of course, because I need a control. So that would be somewhere in the region of about 550 to 600 pounds, just to prove some people wrong on the internet. No, I don't need to be right that badly. But I was trying to think, there must be a way of proving it without, you know, measuring the radiant or proving the radiant heat effect without actually measuring the radiant heat effect. Because what everyone kept telling me was, the amount of energy that's in a candle is fixed. And no matter what you do, you cannot create more heat from that candle. True, absolutely you can't. The amount of energy, the amount of energy in that candle is absolutely fixed. And then people quote various laws of thermodynamics and apparently using the word thermodynamics makes you very scientific sounding but the laws of thermodynamics also state that while energy can't be um, decreated or destroyed which is what they're quoting it can be changed and what this is doing isn't changing the amount of energy it's just expressing it differently it's expressing it in a radiant pattern it's a you know more efficient way of expressing heat still the same amount of energy it's just that we interpret it differently you know, so, it occurred to me that the radiant heat, because, for example, I can actually feel a little bit of heat coming off it. Well, if that's heating my hand, then my hand starts to emit that heat as well. And that will, to a very slight degree, create a microclimate that will heat the air. And that we can test. It's only going to be a small amount, but we can test the radiant heat that is heating the air at a, at a fixed point from this with candles or a pot over and see if there's any difference at all. Because remember, we're not testing the radiant, we're testing the little tiny amount of convective heat that that radiant heat is causing, right? So we're really looking for a fairly small amount of difference to prove this point, because we're testing radiant heat without using a meter for radiant heat. This is the experiment. So we're about to set up the control pod. This is the one with just the candles. So I'm just gonna get them lit. The temperature on that is 12.7. All right, still at 12.7. And I'm about to set up the heater to test. The thermometer is reading 12.7. It just dropped into 12.6 as I opened the door there. So I'd say that's a fair test. And the candles, the plain candles, have had about a, I don't know, minute and a half head start. Not enough to worry about, but if it was the other way around, someone would say that it's because the heater would have a head start, so I just mentioned it, but it's in that favour, not the other way around. So, that's the cast iron pot on. Um, right, we'll retreat for a while and we'll see what it shows. So it's been an hour, we're just checking the control pod and the temperature in there is 
nice and clear, very easy to read. So that's uh, with no pot, just the plain candles. And again, after an hour on the pod that has the heater, not the control, the one that has the actual heater with the pot on, the temperature is 12.6. So that is 0.4 degrees warmer. So that shows a very definite temperature difference between just candles and candles with a pot over them. We're two hours in now. We're back checking the control pod again and the temperature on the thermometer is 12.9 degrees so that's the pod that just has the plain candles that's 12.9 degrees and still after two hours this is the one with the uh, pot on for the heater and it is reading after two hours 13.6 degrees so that's a 0.7 degree temperature difference between the control with just the candles and the heater with the cooking pot. So there is 0.7 degrees Celsius equals 1.25 degrees Fahrenheit. This experiment ran for, well, that experiment ran for just two hours. That's an eight hour candle that increase in temperature probably would have continued, but it wasn't necessary. I'd proven that it is indeed possible to experience more heat from a candle just by putting a pot over it. Absolutely, beyond question, that is now proven and everyone's stating these can't absolutely work because the amount of heat that's in a candle is fixed are wrong. 